Oh, hi. This week, I'm going to show you the absolute madness that comes with the lead up to an art fair that I kind of last minute signed up to do. So I mentioned in last week's video that I'm doing Granite Con, the Granite State Comic Con, the weekend of September 16th through the 18th in Manchester, New Hampshire. So come on by if you would like to see me. I'll be at table E6 in the artist alley in like the main expo hall. And I'm very excited about it. I have an awesome spot. So I've been working on inventory for that. And actually what kickstarted it is an event I did about a month ago for the brewery I work for, Rockingham. I was asked to do a Harry Potter birthday, excuse me, wizarding birthday party on July 31st event. And my boss and the people running it offered for me to peddle my own wares there. And I had some fabric left over that I bought years ago that were licensed Potter fabrics. And then I just pumped out a bunch of stuff that I'm, I'm proud of. I like what I did, but I forgot how I can really like put my foot on the gas when I have that kind of time crunch, but I haven't done events in so long. So I kind of forgot I still had that in me. So I think I sold about a third of the stuff that I brought. It made me feel really good and like confident in what I was making. And I set reasonable prices for stuff. I also made it very clear on the price sheet that 10% of the proceeds were getting donated to Trans Lifeline. Oh, God damn it. I thought my fight with the Yellow Jackets was over. Anyways, I wanted to just share the mode I go into when I'm putting stuff together for an event because it's a uh, kind of madness. And I find this type of video super interesting when other people do it. So I thought I'd share how I handle these things. I'm currently working on a batch of some dice bags and here's here's a thing. I have some fandom specific fabrics to use up and I have those leftover Harry Potter bags and I have a ton of other super nerdy shit I've been working on that is like from a specific piece of media that I assume that there are a number of people that also enjoy. And they're things that I really like, but for some reason, all the stuff I've been working on for this comic book convention that is nerd specific. When I got invited to do this artist market this weekend, I was like, well, I can't bring any of that stuff with me. I have to have anything that's not referencing anything else. And I do have a batch of wristlets that I made earlier in the summer that I listed on my Etsy. I think I sold one and then I ended up taking one off of the listing to gift to somebody else. And I have a couple of things that are just super pretty fabrics. Things I still like but aren't catering to nerds or pop culture references or anything. And I don't, my business is called Sewing Nerd so I don't know why I was doing this to myself because like 85 to 90 percent of my inventory is nerd shit. And I have a small but mighty inventory built up already because as I said over the weeks I've been putting a lot of hours into setting up for next month's event because I'm trying not to murder myself in the run-up to that. But yeah, thankfully the friend who I'm doing this market with and who invited me to do it, when I told her where my brain was at, she was just like, oh my god, please bring your nerdy shit. We want like a diverse group of artists and that is part of what makes your art you. Please, please, please bring all of your stuff. So that made me feel a lot better where I was contemplating like not going to the Saturday event and only going to the Sunday event. So I had all day Saturday day to make like neutral inventory for that event and I just why why do I do this kind of thing to myself I just don't get it in other news to give a glimpse into how this week has been going it is Thursday the 25th of August and I've only known since like this past weekend I'm going to be doing this artist market so thankfully even though I had to work this whole past weekend for the brewery. I didn't post a video last week, but I had filmed a project. So I had actually started a little bit of an editing session before the weekend so that I had a really good head start for Monday. Cause normally I film my project on Monday and like make whatever the thing is. If it's a single day make, obviously things are different if it's a multi-day situation, which I'll get to do more of going forward, taking the one week off of posting a video a month. Where I'm not taking the week off most of the time though of course hopefully I let myself do that in the future. <laughs> One thing I've been doing when I have a video going is I've been making a little checklist over here and I did finish editing at like four o'clock this morning so I'm just gonna do a little and now my list is done. Yay! Oh, and I also did the very responsible adult thing. And yesterday I spent almost my entire morning doing a test run setup of my table, which I always say I'm gonna do. And then I absolutely never do. Here's a picture of the mock. 
Oh god, there's a yellow jacket in here. I want to die. I don't know where it went, but it doesn't seem to be at full capacity, which maybe means the spray we've been using outside is working. I will protect bees as much as humanly possible, but predatory wasps get no space here. They can fuck all the way off. And oh, that's right. This is the mock table setup I decided to go with. And the smart thing I did was take a picture of it so I can put it in my drawing program and use my touchscreen tablet stuff to kind of make notes. And if there's extra bits I want to bring, like some fabric to tuck behind some of the displays to kind of block it out a little better or map out what signs I need where, I think that's going to be really helpful to have those notes. And also help me make a packing list that I always say I'm going to do and then not do. I will check in and share the progress if there is any, hopefully, if I don't get chased out by flying stinging insects. Wish me luck. Okay, the wasp panic was not needed because uh, it turns out it's a fly. I don't think I've ever had a fly in my shop before, so I was also not expecting that. And it's like a chonky boy, but it's not a fucking wasp. And I'm, I'm just not worried about me or the dog getting stung, so that's fine. The fly can do whatever it wants. This is gonna block out the noise, so very relieved. That's the only update I have so far. Good morning! It's not total carnage in my sewing room, but still feeling very scatterbrained and not sure what to start on first. And since I am posting my video today and I'm getting ready for this market and sharing the post, I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff on my phone. So it helped clear my head, help me make a battle plan for the day. Also, I have to go get a couple groceries, so I have to leave the house anyway. Rather than stressing about when to go the rest of the day, I'm just going to knock it out this morning, trying to be smart about this because I know how my brain gets worked up about things. And I'm going to go to the gym for a bit, even though part of me is like, but that's time I'm wasting not working on the market. I know I will be better off for doing this and just be able to get through whatever my to-do list ends up being a lot smoother if I do this for myself. Although, uh, if you can't tell, I'm kind of starting to procrastinate. So I'm going to stop talking and go do the thing. Then I will come back and assess my battle plan for the day because it is Friday. We got less than 24 hours till market. Obviously, I need to like feed myself and sleep in between then. So I'm going to try to make an achievable goal list for the day with some wiggle room at the end. Let's do this. Oh boy, today has been long and I'm only just now getting into the shop to try to sew at least a couple more of these. I spent way more hours than expected making the signage and printing stuff out. This is what I spent a good chunk of time sorting out. And yeah, I think I'm gonna do a preliminary packing. I have a couple things in my toolbox in the back of my truck right now, and I was gonna put the table and my grid setup in there, but we are dealing with thunderstorms tonight, and I don't want everything to be immediately soaking wet. A little morning dew is one thing, but a torrential downpour is another. And I do have two 10 by 10 pop-up tents, so I'm gonna bring those to get some shade make it look a little more like a art fair and less like a yard sale because I'm not really sure what the layout of all of this is going to be but to my brain that seems to make more sense for what we're trying to do over there. The tedious bit is rounding up all of my little display pieces like the big chonkers that's the easy part but it's remembering to grab all of the little bits and making sure I have the right signage make sure I have like scissors tape. I did make a packing list that seems like a smart thing to do so business cards. I, I even have a list of all the inventory I want to bring just in case I forget something in the frenzy. And then there's a list of like all of the snacks I had prepped earlier because I got some fruit and vegetables and some orange juice boxes, stuff like that. So I just want to remember all the things I have planned for as far as even just my food. All right, on to the packing. And then I can finally sit and sew because I forgot that that's a thing I have to do before I work on more bags. It's only eight o'clock at night though, which is fairly early-ish. I did sleep sleep in this morning, so I'm not feeling super tired, and I'm basically just gonna go until I feel pretty sleepy, which last night was around 10 45, 11 p.m. So I'm not gonna go absolutely ham and just try to become a machine and pump out a bunch of stuff. Like, I want to enjoy the process. I am notorious for it absolutely destroying myself trying to get stuff done and then not getting enough sleep the night before the event. Eight hours tomorrow, that's not including loading in and setting up and breaking down and all that stuff. And then four hours on Sunday, which is obviously going to be a lot easier. But yeah, I need to make sure I rest because many years previously I have not let myself do that and have deeply regretted it. I'm not going to do that to myself this weekend. Also, if you're wondering, I just got some poster board at the dollar store. I printed out a bunch of signs. Some of them aren't getting mounted. I basically did like a mat board. Is that what it's called? Just to give it a little extra something because the white paper is pretty plain, but I didn't want to do any of this on colored paper, especially because once I get my own logo sign that's going to hang for my backdrop, not this weekend, but at future events, I'm going to make that or maybe have it 
printed somewhere. I don't know. I'm not dealing with that this weekend. I don't have the time nor the brain power. But because my logo is white, I want to like keep that simple color scheme going through. So everything on my table is black or silver. And then any of the notes have black borders with white paper on top. And I'm really proud of the look that I have going on. On to hauling stuff around. I will check in hopefully before bed, but it may be tomorrow morning. We'll see how hectic things get in the next 12 hours. Hey, hi, hello. I managed to get everything packed. I managed to fit my inventory in the bins where I keep most of my display stuff. I was gonna bring my garment rack to display that stuff, but I think I'm gonna wanna fill some space on my table. I'm gonna play around with that space tomorrow and see how I feel about it. Table and grid are in the mudroom. The tents are in the mudroom. My chairs are in the trunk, of, not trunk. I have a pickup, the toolbox, as well as a wire rack and my Keurig spinner guy. So feeling pretty good about it. This is gonna be a quicker loadout than than I was expecting. That's a plus. I have a bunch of different roller bags, like different kinds of light luggage that are usually absolutely chock full. And I'm sure for GraniteCon, I hope for GraniteCon, I have enough inventory built that like I'm going to need that space. It is almost 1030 and I did not get to any of these today, but I'm glad I did things in the order that I did or else I'd have to be up late pushing myself through all of the essential stuff that I just spent the whole day working on. And what a surprise, it it took pretty much the whole day to do all of that stuff. I really like how my signs came out though. I'm so glad I put that time in and all those files are saved. So even if I have to adjust certain things, all that's gonna go so much quicker and I already have a bunch mounted and it's, it's just less admin I gotta do down the road. Ooh, although actually the only other thing I was gonna grab is something to use as like a sales sheet because I normally just like scribble notes on a scrap piece of paper somewhere or obviously like my square reader documents what the sales are and I can tell by what inventory is no longer there, what has sold already. Although I guess people can steal shit. It, right? Thankfully I have 10 trillion notebooks that I can use for this and this is like a quilting planner thing that my lovely fairy god Cheryl sent me but especially because it's super brightly colored and everything on my table is black. Granted I'll be the only one seeing this but I think it will make me want to use it more if I have this as my like documentation thing. I'm not expecting it to be so busy that I can't keep up with taking notes where once in a while at Granite Con I've had to like play catch up after the fact but I should have to do that for this. And the yawning is telling me that I need to just go to bed and not try to make this batch of bags. This is just going to be that much more exciting to get to. I mean, maybe I'll have time to do it tomorrow afternoon. I'm not really sure what my Saturday afternoon evening will look like. And I can gauge how sales are going tomorrow. And if I'm like cleared out of dice bags or whatever, sure, I'll come home and make those, but I'm not gonna stress about it. And hey, that's a whole bunch prepped. So yeah, nothing wrong with having stuff prepped for future events. It's gonna be great. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned on here, but my very lovely boss at the brewery has let me put together a Halloween market, like artist fair, kind of like what we're doing this weekend, but at the brewery. And that's gonna be October 2nd from one to four. I'll post about more details once it's closer and we have more stuff locked in, but I'm so excited. It's gonna be awesome. So having three events within five, six weeks, like just barely outside of a month, feels good to kind of be in the swing of things, but also be only excited about them. I'm on track with my inventory building, so I'm not gonna be panic sewing as much as previous years where I've left everything till the last minute. So that's also helpful. Okay. I'm gonna stop rambling for now and hopefully show you me setting stuff up tomorrow. If nothing else, I will show you what my table looks like once it's together. I think it's gonna be a bit of a mad dash, but the fact that I have everything condensed to just a few bins feels very good. And I'm glad I took the time to kind of rearrange things and make that happen. So yeah, it's gonna be good. All right, I'm back home. The event was successful. The That was the only clip I got because I kept forgetting to film stuff and I was kind of also just hanging out with one of my very dear friends. It went well. There weren't all that many people that came by but I still made above my like goal number even though someone got confused about one of my prices which I will redo those signs in time for GraniteCon. There's a couple little tweaks I'm gonna make, but yeah, they had grabbed one of my wristlets, which I had for $28 or two for 50, and they got it confused with some of my like little dumpling pouches, which were 
$12 each, two for 20. When I pointed at the sign and was like, oh, I'm so sorry for the confusion. That's completely on me. And then I had like the menu price list of like everything on the table. So when she said, oh, this is 12, I pointed at the sign. I was like, oh, actually, sorry, that's the wristlet bag. And she was like, oh, 28, short. Sure. Let me just grab another 20 out of my purse. And like, no question, no issue, wasn't like, Oh, excuse me, you want how much for it? The previous version of me would have been like, I'll take $12. The two things I want to change is some of the signs I had, I didn't make poster board backings for. And my thinking was some of them are going to be freestanding on the little easels and I wanted backing cards there. And then a couple were going to get hung up in certain spots, but then other ones were getting taped in place. So I thought those wouldn't need the backing, but I hated how they looked with just being the paper and not having the backing. And also some of them did need to get hung up and I, I just miscalculated, I guess. Also, I kind of forgot about this. Ooh this thing, this, mm, there we go. I can't do the mirror image. Shelving unit up here. It's a little triangular corner unit and I have all of these hooks along here where I've used it in the past to like put paintings up and have like a little stand for the paintings to kind of sit in those hooks. But I think I'm gonna swap out that top silver crate for this and hang my dice bags off that because they were kind of set back into the crate. The sign was set back in the crate. This brings them to the forefront it gives me a spot to hang them from. I'll have two levels to be hanging them because they're also short enough that like having some here and having some here won't be an issue. It'll still give me good height overall because I think they're about the same height as the other crate that I have. And then down the road when I have the hats, the foam head can still go on top of there and I won't be losing that real estate. You know what I mean? So yes, even though it's going to be a pain in the ass because I have stuff on it because I use it as a shelf where the other things, they just get stored in the corner with all of my other display items inside. Those are like convention only items where this, I have a lot of artwork on there and some like bottles I've saved from things like the fucking Sriracha beer that I got. And there's a Voodoo Donuts beer that I had. They're empty, but I kept the bottles because they look cool. So yeah, that kind of stuff. It'll be worth digging it out to update the display. And because the event went till four today, I came home and hung out with Bert for a bit and then started on a handful of these. I think I picked five out and just like really eye-catching fabrics. I'm just gonna hammer the rest of these out. I'm about halfway done making them all and then uh, even threading the ribbon through like I can sit and do that while I'm watching TV but I'm gonna finish constructing these right now, get all the top stitching done and then eat a bunch of pizza and go to bed. And it is a later start tomorrow. It starts at 10 a.m. and only goes till 2. Hopefully the word gets out a little bit more and more people can come by. At least it, it was super nice out. The wind was a little bit much for the signs that I had so I had to adjust a bit meaning no more easels. I had to tape those cards down to the table itself because everything kept falling over but obviously when I do an indoor event those will be fine to stand up and like be more visible. Okay hi we're back and it is Monday morning. I just woke up well I took the trash out and now I am fully awake. Okay one thing I am absolutely doing for myself any future events even though it takes time but there's gonna be a lot of overlap with this so I can probably just make a couple of tweaks is a packing list. I've always meant to do it and I'm sure I've scribbled out like five or six things that I needed but this was so granular to the point like I got upset because I listed Gatorade and I forgot it on Saturday and then was like kicking myself the whole day for having forgotten it and also having separate ones for each day which I know is wasting another piece of paper but display stuff was fine because I left all that in the truck but at least my like snack and food list like personal items. I did forget a couple of those the second day because I was like yeah I packed all that yesterday so like I'll remember to do it and I absolutely didn't and I, I should know myself better than that. There were also a couple things I added as I went about my day. This event was outside so I didn't need the fairy lights but I'm absolutely using it for any indoor events which is most of them. And okay as I was talking about Saturday night when I was kind of catching you up on how that day had gone and the stuff I was working on, I did finish those dice bags. And as you can see on the display update, I did get this corner shelf out of here. Also, for once, I unpacked everything and put every single thing back where it was supposed to go and like anything that had a new home because I've been building more inventory. So there's just like more stuff to go places. I did all of that 
before I even like made dinner after getting home from the event yesterday, which I never do. I always leave that stuff to like days later. I hate unpacking. The relief I felt walking in the shop this morning. I still have to vacuum in here and like next to the couch where I was trimming a lot of little thread. Little bits of fabric are everywhere and I do need to clean that up, but otherwise stuff is back where it needs to be and I can just go about my business. Quite literally my business. Also, this is still what's left of the dice bags I have prepped. There's I think 12 left, but everything is notched. All of the circles are notched. They're like amidst the pile and I have everything pinned right sides together. Back to the setup. I really, really like how this ended up looking. One of my friends, actually two of my friends, gave me some feedback about how closed in it felt with me standing behind it. And a lot of people were actually kind of sitting next to their table, but most events I do, you're kind of confined to behind the table. You can't really be off to the side because there's another table right next to you either side. So I was trying to like keep in that mindset and just stay with that perspective. So anything I got frustrated with happening, there's certainly some signs I'm going to change, but no huge overhauls, which made me happy to realize like, yep, yeah, this, this was pretty good. So bringing the triangle shelf and turning the big rectangular crate. So it was upside down on the table instead of upright, gave that difference in height. And I moved my big cubes all the way to the right, which also gave me like a another display wall to the right, which was brilliant. So happy with how that ended up looking because I was able to put up my recent Ramona Flowers cardigan as a sample for like, hey, here's some things I could make. Bert keeps getting out of his cat tent, walking out of the shop, circling in the doorway and just looping back. What do you need? What is it? I think he's looking for a second breakfast. Okay, back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Even considering the other items I'm gonna have for Granite Con, where it's gonna be more garments, but I'm gonna have a garment rack behind me. I forgot that I have a dress form that I've used for displays before. I wouldn't have brought my garment rack because the wind was a little bit much some of the days, some of the two days, during parts of the two days I was there. But I think I would have been okay with my dress form because that's stable enough on its tripod that I don't think it would have tipped over. I'm so glad I like took a couple seconds to do that and like film it because I I almost never do that But thankfully I was doing this video and it was more on my mind than probably would be otherwise because I'm very bad at self-promoting as y'all probably know on that note I'm not putting all the stuff in my Etsy because that's a lot of administrative work that I do not want to do to myself especially because all of that's coming with me to Granite Con, where if I sell them in person, then I'll have to like take the listing down, have wasted the listing money, all of that stuff. So if there's anything you see in here, you all absolutely get first dibs. So if you message me between now and September 16th, I am more than happy for that to go to you first. So just message me if there's something and we can talk it out. But yeah, I'm a little under three weeks away from Granite Con and knowing how many people are going to come through and especially because I feel like I'm in a really good spot. The way it kind of drew people in, like I saw them react to the table, I found that very helpful. And then the spots where they were confused or like not looking, I didn't see a single person really even eyeball the dice bags the first day because they were so like shrunk back and almost almost hidden. Like I, I know they weren't, but everything else was presented so openly. So having the triangle shelf made it so people were grabbing it too, because they were hanging down and things being clipped up like that. And having one cinched up as a display to show like both looks, like here's what it looks like uncinched, but here's what it looks like like a like a prop money bag from a video game. I, and for the convention, I'm absolutely just gonna call them dice bags because it didn't seem to make a difference me calling them drawstring bags or not. And same thing with the dumpling pouches. I'm absolutely going to change that because the confusion with the wristlets versus the zipper pouches on the list, like I just wanna get rid of that. So if someone's standing back looking at the prices and assessing what they might want, I want people to know how much the stuff is that they would like to purchase before they even have to ask me. Obviously, I don't mind answering those questions, but I get kind of anxious about interacting with someone if I'm unsure about buying stuff. So it's very helpful for me if I know how much a thing costs, where I find myself avoiding things, even at like the farmer's market, if there's some food that I want and I'll spend less than $10 on it, but not more than 15 I don't know what that range is. And if I ask and show interest, I am at that farmer's market a lot. I don't want to have a negative interaction with them. I'd rather have no interaction with them. 
although I say that, I wasn't upset if anybody came over, asked a question about a price or anything like that. No one seemed upset at the cost of things, but if someone had a question and then didn't end up buying anything, like, I wasn't taking it personally, which is huge. I absolutely have come so far, I guess this is the time to get into that, in so many facets of this, because I made three sales on Saturday, and I made more in that day with three sales because that day had a total of five shoppers come through and I sold to over half of them. The fact I made my goal amount in that few sales means I'm paying myself a much more reasonable amount for the time I'm putting into things. Still not like if I clocked every hour I put into each of these bags, it'd be more expensive, but I also sit and watch Doctor Who or I'm on a video call while I'm prepping the stuff. So it's not the same as being on the clock at a job somewhere else where you're like hammering stuff out the whole time, being efficient every minute of the time I'm there, where I don't have to do that to myself. That is the joy of being self-employed, at least partially. So I feel like I had fair prices, maybe still on the low side, but fair prices for everything. So when I made so few sales, I still walked away with a fair amount of compensation for it, and that felt really nice. It was obvious that I just valued my stuff more, meaning I valued myself more, which made other people also value me and the stuff more. Like, it was very clear I was giving off a different vibe than any previous things where I was just fucking terrified. It felt so bad about stuff, like, I didn't feel gross being there because obviously I signed up for things to go do it but very much felt like I shouldn't be there other people here are way more legit than me it's not that my heart wasn't in it I just didn't believe in myself essentially and seeing the difference in that and okay probably the thing you're most interested in hearing about and I almost forgot to tell you is how well sales went on Sunday where obviously I felt better about everything and was not expecting much. The way I got to test run and work out how the display went and just see it in action, so that is like invaluable information to be getting for this. And yeah, getting hangouts with some of my favorite people was also not the worst thing. But there was more foot traffic on Sunday and I felt very loved because I had over the weekend multiple friends and family show up and it meant a lot. Even those that didn't buy anything, just the fact that they showed up just to just to be there because sometimes all it takes is one person coming up to the table to get a bunch of people to come up to the table. I experienced that at the farmer's market when I work for the brewery. It'll be nobody at all for a while and then one person, even if they're coming just to like compliment my hair or ask, can you fish in that pond behind you? Those things, it draws other people over. So it genuinely meant a lot and just boosted my mood for the day. So I actually have a log of everything. I was proud of myself for making notes. I'm really bad at making notes. I think we got maybe 15 to 20 people come through. I think probably 15 actual customers and I made six sales. It felt like about half of the people that came through ended up buying stuff. Like I said, because I have things at a fair rate, I wasn't paying myself in literal pennies. Like I get to cover a whole tank of gas. It's so very, very evident. Like it is palpable the difference between me selling stuff basically any previous year from now and getting back into it. Right now, like, this is one of three events I'm doing in about a month span, and I have missed it so much. Where, obviously, there's safety and health concerns with being in any kind of group setting, and especially now that we're in, like, the last quarter of the year and it's getting colder, I feel like, leading into winter time, there's always just more stuff going around. So continuing to be mindful about that stuff. I am reaching out to people. Actually, I even messaged the farmer's market that I work for the brewery, where I was like, Obviously, I have to work the brewery tent for the weeks that I'm scheduled through the end of the season where that market only goes till October, so there's about a month worth of markets left. And I did message them, like, if there's a week that the brewery isn't scheduled and have an artist tent available, because they often have, like, a featured artist every week. So I sent them a message just to ask, because worst they can say is no, where if I'm already telling myself no to start with, it's either gonna get me the same position I'm currently in, which is not doing it, or potentially get to do it. By the way, that's the quote that is getting me through so many things when I'm nervous to reach out or ask or anything, invite people to do things. Realizing me not doing it and being too afraid to ask because rejection sensitivity, whatever it may be, just being afraid of 
I don't know, illogical possibilities is where my brain goes, where it's like someone's gonna be absolutely horrified and offended that I would ever try to speak to them. Like that's not how most people operate. And if they do, that is not someone that I wanna be spending any time on. Where in reality, the worst the person can say is no or like not give a response, which is also a no. But there's that chance that either they can do the thing or are willing to have me do the thing, or at least it's reaching out and like starting to build some kind of connection where, oh, I can't come to this market you're putting together, but keep me in mind for next time because my schedule might be more open, that kind of stuff. That's been a lot of the interactions I've been having when I've reached out to people. It's just been a very helpful mantra to have. I'm just feeling less terrified of the world and like I'm not being an imposition by taking up some space and just existing where I used to think I was absolutely bothering people if they came up to my table and were checking stuff out at an event and I was so self-conscious about all the stuff I made and just like me as a person that I rarely said hi. It was only if they made direct eye contact and wanted to ask me a question. And I'd imagine I wasn't even coming across as particularly welcoming to questions where I've been told a lot of times throughout my life that my shyness and like being too scared to talk to people sometimes comes across as like unapproachable and not mean, but they just seem intimidating, which is hilarious to me when the first person ever told me that it's like, are you talking about the same person that, uh, like, we're talking about me? You know I wasn't speaking because I didn't feel like I was valuable enough to participate in the conversation and just thought everyone was too cool for me. Like, that's what was going through my head as I was screaming internally because of the anxiety. And they're like, oh, it came across like you were too cool for anybody. Absolutely wild. So knowing that's how people in, in my real life perceived me, strangers certainly would have been getting the same vibe and just accidentally coming across as really closed off and unapproachable and seeing the difference where I'm saying hi to people, just opening the door where, hey, let me know if you have any questions. And then if they don't wanna have any more back and forth or even if they don't respond to that, I don't take that personally either. It was torturous and not feeling that way anymore is honestly something I just, I didn't know I could experience. So very appreciative for all of the help I've gotten in the past couple of years and all the support I've gotten from folks like y'all, not to dismiss the work I have done. I know I have done so much work on myself for a long time, but it has been leaps and bounds during the past couple of years. So it was pretty cool seeing how much I've grown in such a tangible way the past couple of days where I didn't know what was gonna happen. It's my first time since late 2019, maybe early, early 2020, doing any kind of event for myself and kind of like selling my wares, which also in part is like kind of selling yourself to people. I'm feeling confident, which as a sentence on its own is something I thought I'd never say, but I'm feeling confident about the event. I feel like it's a very achievable goal to make my table back and beyond where that pottery artist, which I'll link below. She makes really cool stuff. I follow her TikTok. I've seen a lot of her earring designs. And like, I, I love them so much. But the advice she gave my friend that then passed it along to me was, it's a successful event to her if she makes five times her table back. It's like $225 for a granite con table now that it's a three day event and making over a thousand dollars could even possibly be a goal for me. I wouldn't have let myself have that kind of goal. That, I mean, that feels astronomical to me. There's absolutely no way I ever would have considered that being close to an option, but I've done so much work on myself. I've leveled up my sewing so much. I'm just changing in so many good ways that that does feel doable and setting up my table and my inventory in a way that I'm more likely to make that happen also feels very doable. And having the price points where they're at, having enough of everything, not talking people out of buying the stuff and just being a better salesperson for myself because I think having that as a goal, you know, it, it still feels big, but I, th I think if things go well at all for me, I, I think I'll be able to pull it off. and. It feels bold to be saying that statement, but also why not shoot for that? Like, why not have that be the goal? Yeah, it feels really fucking nice. And I'm happy to see that I didn't just backpedal and kind of revert to previous versions of myself and terrified and not feeling worthwhile the whole time and like 
an imposter there. Like, I felt like I earned my space to be there and it was just wonderful. I'm very thankful that I even got invited to do this because it was such a wonderful learning experience. And I got to meet other artists and I got to see one of my dear friends make her first art sale and I'm so proud of what she did and seeing people be so receptive to what she had and it, it just made me really happy. I have little goosebumps even thinking about all of that and yeah, it's, it's a nice community to be surrounded by is other makers and it's part of why I am so fucking thankful for all of you and obviously I wouldn't be able to take the time to do this stuff and make the things I get to make and better my sewing skills without everyone over on Patreon. Like that has been what's gotten me through all of these years of not believing in myself and not letting me have successful events. I was able to survive because so many of you believe in me so hard and I owe you the world for that. Like there, there aren't words to express my gratitude for that because basically y'all have been seeing stuff in me that I didn't know was here for a really long time. So it means a lot and I'm very thankful because I get to be here now and experience life as a person that feels okay about themselves, feels good about the stuff they're making and can accept compliments and can accept positive things coming my way. And yeah, I just I clearly have some very big feelings towards y'all. Just getting to nerd out about certain sewing techniques or y'all sharing what you make in the comments and posting pictures. I am where I am now because of y'all and just this sense of community has been such a positive aspect of my life for so long and I know so many of you have been here for a really long time and I just want you to know it has been one of my favorite things that I have been able to build with the help of y'all is this little corner of the internet. It, it is one of the most important things to me. So thank you all for hanging out and following along on the journey. I feel like I've been talking for seven years, so I'm going to go cozy up on the couch with my little bean boy. He abandoned me and went on the couch like 45 minutes ago, I think, because he was sick of me not snuggling him. And yeah, I'm excited to see where all this is gonna go. Life has been weird so far, but we're on finally an upswing, it feels like. So thank you for coming along on the ride. I will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Buckle in for the chaos. Oh boy, that completely derailed what I was talking about. Are we surprised? Of course not.